When looking at the feature gap between Office Scripts and VBA, one of the most common user comments is that Office Scripts don't contain user forms. And those people aren't wrong. Office Scripts don't contain user forms. But what is a user form? Well, it's really a method for collecting user input. So in this video, I want to look at three ways that we can create a user form type interactivity, but using Office Scripts. Now I'm not saying that these methods are as good as VBA, but they are creative ways that we can think about Office Scripts. We're also not going to go through all the code in every example. You can look at the code and you can copy it and paste it from the blog post. And there's a link in the descriptions box below. But we are gonna look at three ways that we can create this type of interactivity. So if you're ready, let's get started. The first method uses shapes which are placed on the face of the worksheet. And then we use Office Scripts to toggle the visibility of those shapes either on or off. So here we have our simple example that we'll be working through for all of our methods. I have a name here in cell C3. If I double click on that, you can see that cell is protected. And that's also the same with cell C5. So therefore, we want to use user form type interactivity to capture those values from a user and then populate them into those cells. We're going to start by clicking on this pencil icon. This icon is an Office Scripts button that turns the visibility of those shapes on. So let's enter some values in here. My name is Mark. Do I love scripts? Type yes. And then I can click done. So the done and close buttons are also Office Script buttons. And you can see that has now populated cell C3 and C5 with those values. In this scenario, there are two scripts. The pencil icon toggles the visibility of the shapes on. The close icon toggles the visibility of the shapes off. So that just makes those shapes visible or not. When we click done, that turns the visibility off and then also enters the values into those cells. So let's have a quick look at the office script. The first one is called toggle shape user form. Click edit. So we start by getting our worksheet. Then we have a list of all the shapes in our worksheet that we want to toggle either on or off. And each of those is separated by a pipe symbol. We have a list of the shapes that collect the user input. And then we have a corresponding list of the cells that that input should be placed into. We split each of those lists into an array. Then we find out if the first shape in our shape list array is visible. Then we loop through all of the shapes in our array and set the visibility status to the opposite. So if our shapes were visible, it then hides them. And if they're hidden, it makes them visible. Finally, we capture the values from the worksheet and enter them into the user form. And this script is run by the pencil icon and the close button. The other script that we use relates to the done button. So let's take a look at that code. This script is called accept shape user form. It follows a similar principle. So it lists the shapes, then it gets those shapes into an array. It then tests if they're visible and then toggles that visibility on or off. However, rather than getting the values from the cells and inputting them into the user form, instead, we get the values from the user form and we input them back into the cells. Because these cells are locked, it means that unfortunately, we do have to unprotect and then reprotect our worksheet at the end. So how are our shapes set up? Well, let me unprotect the sheet. And then we can look at the status of our shapes. So each of our shapes has been set so that it's locked and the text is locked unless it is our input field. The input fields are text boxes where the text is unlocked. That means we can enter values into those text boxes. So this is the first method that we've looked at for how we might create a user form using Office Scripts. The second method of creating user forms to work with Office Scripts uses hidden columns. Here on the worksheet, you can see that column G is then followed by column L. And this is because those columns in between are hidden. 
But if I click on the pencil icon, that will then run a script which unhides that range. It also populates these cells with the values that we already have. Let's say my name is Dave. Does Dave love Office scripts? Let's say no. We'll click done. That has now updated cells C3 and C5 accordingly. And this method also uses two scripts. So the pencil icon button and the close button, they toggle that range to be hidden or visible. And then done makes that range hidden and inputs the values back into the cells. So let's have a brief look at that code. And then I'll click the edit icon. So we start with our worksheet and then we define the range which contains that user form. We create two lists of the input range and the target range. So the cells that contain those values initially and then the cells in our user form. We then split those lists into two arrays. We test if the range is visible. If it is visible, we then hide those columns. And if they are hidden, then we make them visible. Then we set the default values. So the values in C3 and C5 then populate the cells in J3 and J5, which are in our user form. So that's the script that toggles this user form on and off. So it's the pencil icon to view the user form, or it's the close button to close the user form. Now let's look at the script for the done button. And again, this script follows a very similar pattern. The key difference is that the values in cell J3 and J5 are returned to cells C3 and C5. And we also need to protect and unprotect that worksheet in a similar way. A third method that we're looking at is how we can use a worksheet to behave as a user form. So here, if I click on my pencil icon, that will then run an Office script that makes a worksheet visible. This worksheet contains a user form style. And again, it has similar information. It's loaded the data from our original cells. So let's change this. Let's say my name is Danny. Does Danny love Office scripts? Let's say he doesn't. Now click done. There we go. That's now loaded those values back into my protected cells. And this method also uses two scripts. So the toggle worksheet user form. Let's have a look at that code. As you can see, this script uses very similar principles to the previous methods where we create these lists of cells that we want to use inside our user form. And this means that if we ever need to add new cells or new elements, we can just add them into these lists. And here our visibility test is testing whether our worksheet is very hidden or whether our worksheet is visible. And it toggles between those two options. So that's driven by the pencil icon button and the close button. The final script is then the done button for our worksheet method. And let's take a look at that code as well. So it won't surprise you that this follows very similar principles. And here we have the section of code that's picking up the values from our user form worksheet and places them into our original worksheet. So that's another way in which we can create user forms that work with Office scripts. So that's it. That's three ways that we can create user form type interactivity that works with Office scripts. Now, actually, there's a fourth way, or maybe there's six ways. Because in all the methods we've looked at, we've used objects that already exist. But we can easily use Office scripts to create these objects on the fly, to create the shapes as we need them, to create the range or the worksheet as we need it, which means those scripts can be even more flexible. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you like what we teach, why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training program. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.